That's what, yeah, we've done that in the past lineups and then the anthem. Um, usually they wait till zero to start reading the lineups because the teams actually line up on the back side. Okay. Okay. Yeah, if you could, yeah, if you want to put a spot on, go ahead, Wyatt, share these, share this stuff out. From Mustang Field here at Laurel Highlands High School, it's time for high school boys soccer here on the South Union Township Sports Network. Brian Morozak alongside Jerry Dupe. South Union Township Sports Network coverage brought to you as a joint cooperative venture featuring Township Supervisors Bob Schiffbauer, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott, Atlantic Broadband Cable, Armstrong Cable, and our friends at CUTV, including Gary Smith. The first game here on the new turf at Laurel Highlands High School, the Mustangs 3-1 and one overall, 2-1 and one out of Section 3, 3A play. Jerry Rogers in his eighth year as the head coach of the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. The Ringgold Rams, one and two both overall and in the conference. Matt Snyder in his second year as the head coach of the Ringgold Rams. Laurel Highlands off to a nice start, but they might be a little bit short-handed here today. The Mustangs without starters Matt Lucas, Matt Phillips, and also Carson Seaman for this game. But the Mustangs, despite being shorthanded, have been able to pick up wins over Bentworth, Thomas Jefferson, and Trinity so far this season. Their only loss, a 2-0 loss against Bell Vernon back on September the 11th. Their last game this past Monday, a one to nothing victory on the road at Trinity. This will be the first home game, as we said, of the season for the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. Ringo, they sit at 1-2. and two. They lost their opener against a very strong Albert Gallatin team, losing that game 2-0. They won at Washington, and Washington a conference game for both Ringgold and Laurel Highlands this year. They defeated the Little Prexies at Ringgold 2-0, and then, like the Mustangs, fell against Bell Vernon by a 3-1 decision that game played this past Monday. Looking at the Section 3-3A standings right now, Bell Vernon at the top of the table. They're 3-0 in the conference, 5-0 overall, and the Albert Gallatin Colonials Maybe a little bit surprising for them in second place along with Laurel Highlands. Both teams at 2-1. and one. They meet in York Run next Tuesday. And Albert Gallatin, 4-1 and one overall. Laurel Highlands, 3-1 and one overall. Again, the top four teams make the WPI playoffs. Thomas Jefferson and Trinity sitting at 1-1-1 one, one and one in the conference. The Jags, 4-1-1 one and one overall. The Hillers, 2-1-1 one and one overall. Again, the Rams sitting at 1-2 and two in the conference, 1-2 and two overall. The Little Prexies new to the conference this year, 1-2 and two in conference play. And one and two overall. The Uniontown Red Raiders 0 and three in the conference, but Uniontown two and three overall. And Uniontown is playing a conference schedule this year after playing as an independent last year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. These two schools split the season series last year. Ringgold defeated Laurel Highlands one to nothing at Joe Montana Stadium, and at the time that was the Rams' fourth straight win in the series over the Mustangs, but Laurel Highlands won 3-1 to one here at Mustang Field on October the 6th, and that one actually kept the Mustangs in the playoff race, and they eventually qualified for the postseason, but fell at Mars 5-1 to one in a very competitive WPIL first-round playoff game. The Mustangs have now qualified for the playoffs in five straight seasons, and the Rams, they went 3-9 and nine last year. That was the first time they've missed out on the postseason since 2015. Should be a fun night of high school soccer. We'll take a quick timeout and be back with the Starting lineups, the national anthem, and the start of tonight's match, Laurel Highlands and Ringgold here on the South Union Township Sports Network.
Chesler's Furniture at 601 Pittsburgh Street, Uniontown has been in business since 1950 and has a wide variety of furniture for all of your needs. At Chesler's, they have a wide assortment of living room recliners, kitchen sets, bedroom mattresses, and accessories that can decorate your home for years to come. Shoes for many companies, including Lazy Boy, Best, King Hickory, Hammery, Lancer, Wildwood, Von Bassett, and White Dove. Chesler's also services what they sell. Stop into Chesler's Fine Furniture, Route 51 north of Uniontown, and see Kim, Christy, Ted, and Rich. They'll be happy to help you with all of your needs. Chesler's Furniture, where customers send their friends. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Mustang Field. Back here at Mustang Field, we'll turn it over to our public address announcer for tonight's starting lineups. Welcome to tonight's boys soccer matchup between the visiting Ringgold Rams and your Lower Highlands Mustangs. Tonight's lineup, we'll start with the visiting Ringgold Rams. In goal, Aiden Whaley. <laughs> On defense, Chance Capicotto. <laughs> At forward, Ben Daskovic. <laughs> On defense, Tyler Davis. <laughs> also on defense, Aiden Weaver. <laughs> A midfielder, Shane Seiler. Midfielder, David Mollesey. Midfield, Owen Haywood. And forward, Jiraj Stasco. And forward, Zachary Alvarez. And on defense, Ryan Cole. The Rams are led by head coach Matthew Snyder. Let's go, and now the lineup for your Lower Highlands Mustangs. At forward, number one, Manuel Olivares. On defense, number two, Caleb Janoski. Midfielder, number three, Joey Lomansky. Midfielder, number nine, Thatcher Wilson. In goal, number 10, Luke Simpson. On defense, number 11, Ben Diamond. Midfielder, number 14, Tim Lasick. On defense, number 20, Kayton Ruvacaba. At forward, number 22, Nico Johns. Midfielder, 25, Harry Radcliffe. And on defense, number 30, Ian Hamilton. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we would now ask that you rise and men, please take off your caps for the playing of our national anthem.
Just about set to go here for Mustang Field. The Laurel Highlands Mustangs and the Ringgold Rams. Laurel Highlands and the home Reds with white numbers and blue shorts. They'll defend to our left here in the first half. The Ringgold Rams and the away whites. White shirts, white shorts with blue numbers and they'll defend the gold to our right. Interestingly enough, these two schools' football programs will meet on Friday night as well. Our first of Maybe four straight days of live games here on the South Union Township Sports Network. We'll have some softball on Saturday. Girls soccer tomorrow, Laurel Highlands and Trinity. And then football on Friday night. So setting up a busy week. Getting started with the first game on this surface here at Laurel Highlands High School. And the referee's out. And we'll get this match underway. Laurel Highlands with a 4-4-2 here today. Oliveris and Johns up front. Thatcher Wilson, Joey Lemansky, Harry Radcliffe, and Tim Lasick in the midfield with Kate Rule Vacaba, Ian Hamilton, Ben Diamond, and Caleb Yanoski in the back. Luke Simpson in goal. Ringgold also going with a 4-4-2. They have Ben Daskovich and Gerard Stasco up front. Siler, Mollesey, Haywood, and Alvarez in the midfield with Capacado, Davis, Weaver, and Cole on defense. The freshman, Aiden Whaley in goal, and are underway with the Mustangs sending it back for a quick blast there from Joey Lemansky and sent down on the near side to Harry Radcliffe. Radcliffe looking for the cross, but the ball over the far touch line and out, and it'll be a Goal kick here for Ringgold. Laurel Highlands with four seniors, three juniors, and four sophomores in their starting 11 here today. Ringgold with four seniors, three juniors, three sophomores, and one freshman. It's Tyler Davis who will send it away. A Ram senior on the back line. And Davis with a blast. A little header there from Radcliffe. Knocked down by Nico Johns and... Trying to lay some service there to Harry Radcliffe, who lost it there to Davis as the Rams look to break back out with Shane Seiler on the reset. Back to Davis down on the far side. Low ball coming back through the midfield. Intercepted there by the Mustangs' Ben Diamond. Diamond sending it off there on the left wing. A little touch forward from Lasik on to Joey Lemansky. And an angle too far on the far side. Well, maybe not. Lasik's going to be able to touch that down with a little poke. Looking there for Oliveris. And Davis with a clear out. We mentioned this is the first game on the new surface. In most schools, you generally see the yellow soccer lines. They've decided to go black here at Mustang Field. And so far, they've been easy to spot. We'll see as dusk falls a little bit more if we can still pick up those lines. And there's Nico Johns a little turn and a shot, but sent it over the goal and out. It'll be a goal kick coming back here for Ringgold. Brian Morozak alongside Jerry Dupe. Nice to have you along with us here on the South Union Township Sports Network, first home game of the season for the Laurel Highlands boys soccer team. Again, they're sitting at 3-1 and one overall, 2-1 and one in conference play. Ringgold 1-2 and two overall and 1-2 and two in the conference. Old steal there from Laurel Highlands. Sent down to Radcliffe. A little one-hopper from the top of the 18, scooped up there by Aiden Whaley. And Whaley will throw it back out off the body there of Shane Seiler. And he'll settle it down on the... Far side as the Rams with a little blast into the Laurel Highlands zone. Ian Hamilton will track it down and angle it off there to the Mustangs. Caton Rulvacabo, we mentioned Laurel Highlands, a little shorthanded. No Matt Lucas, no Matt Phillips, and no Carson Seaman. Some familiar names that you've heard if you've tuned into our Laurel Highlands soccer broadcast over the years. The Mustangs hopeful to have at least a couple of those guys back here over the next couple of weeks. Lucas just got injured in the Bell Vernon game this past Saturday. A little turn and a blast out from Yanoski. Owen Haywood knocking it down there, though, for Ringgold. As the Rams reset from the far side. Over to Ryan Cole, the junior defenseman. Cole with Johns adding some pressure, and Chance Capacato able to keep it alive there for Ringgold. They actually had a man breaking on the near wing, Zach Alvarez. They never got it in his direction. And the Mustangs regain possession. And breaking back forward, a little through ball intended there for Oliveris. And the Rams again send it out of the zone. Back on the feet of Zachary Alvarez. Alvarez down to David Mollesey. Mollesey looking to angle it on the far side. Again, the Mustangs turn it away. Bodied down there by Thatcher Wilson. Wilson actually started the season in goal for Laurel Highlands. And just due to the fact that 
The Mustangs are a couple of men down. It's Simpson in goal and Wilson playing the field. And Wilson back on it here with a little cross on the far side. John's unable to knock it down. And it goes back through on the far side. Or Laurel Highlands tries to reset up again. And Nico Johns got tripped up. And that was right at the top of the 18-yard box. Let's see where they're going to rule this. Was it inside or outside of the box? It looks like from the early indication it's going to be outside the 18-yard box. If it was inside, it would be a penalty kick for Laurel Highlands. And boy, they're going to put it right on the outside of the line. Wow. And Harry Radcliffe will take the free kick here for the Mustangs. First real scoring opportunity of the game. Radcliffe with a blast. Sends it into the back of the net. So the free kick from 19 yards out. Radcliffe strikes. And Laurel Highlands goes on top 1-0 here at the 35-47 mark of the first half. Harry Radcliffe picking up his third goal of the season. Laurel Highlands in business. Up one to nothing, and the Mustangs have controlled much of the ball early on in this match. Aiden Weaver on the near side, double teamed, and it's Oliveris along with Wilson battling. And Oliveris trying to keep it alive here around the near boundary. Ball goes off of Ringgold and out and talking to Laurel Highlands head coach Jerry Rogers before the start of the match. He said, hey, we had some tough decisions to make here today. Mustangs goal. Where they go with Thatcher Wilson or Luke Simpson in goal. We mentioned Wilson with two clean sheets. Simpson with a clean sheet on Monday. And the Mustangs win over Trinity. So both have proven their worth in goal. But obviously Wilson gives the Mustangs a little more on the field, knowing they're still going to get solid goaltending from Simpson. And they're up one to nothing on the Radcliffe goal again, his third of the season. And five minutes in, Laurel Highland's sitting pretty, up one to nothing. And Radcliffe's been busy this fall. He's also the kicker on the Laurel Highlands football team, and he's gotten a lot of action as the Mustangs football team has started off the year. 3-0 as well, and that one from Wilson going wide of the freshman keeper, Aiden Whaley, and out. And I'll set up a goal kick here for the Rams. Just underway, five and a half minutes in, Laurel Highlands a one to nothing lead. Brian Morozak alongside Jerry Dupay. Nice to have you along with us here on the South Union Township Sports Network as Tyler Davis will take the goal kick. Mustangs look to knock it down, but Shane Seiler there for the Rams as Ringgold looks to Set up the counterattack, but it's going to go all the way back to Ben Diamond, who will blast it away off of Caleb Janoski and bodied back down there by Radcliffe. Harry here on the near side, looking for some open field ahead and finds Manny Oliveris. But it's Davis knocking it out of play. Our broadcast today here on the South Union Township Sports Network brought to you in part by the Sprouse Insurance Group and Agent David Hughes, United Bank. We got a little action here in front of Aiden Whaley, who scoops it up with Nico Johns fronting him inside the goal box there. So Laurel Highland, some early pressure. Again, the Sprouse Insurance Group and Agent David Hughes, United Bank, Davis and Davis Attorneys at Law, Smith Lewis Chess CPAs in Uniontown, Jason Scott, South Union Township Supervisor, Southwestern Gastrointestinal Specialist, SWGI in Uniontown, Zebley Mahalo Van White, Uniontown Business and Bankruptcy Attorneys, UPMC Centers for Rehab Services on Whalen Smith Drive, Jim Burns Director, South Union Township Supervisors, Robert Schiff Bauer, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott, and Chessler's Fine Furniture, Pittsburgh Road, Uniontown, in front of the Fayette Plaza, where customers send their friends, all making this broadcast possible for you here today on the South Union Township Sports Network. Rams looking for the equalizer, breaking back through center. That's Zachary Alvarez on the run. Was trying to poke it up there to Jiraj Stasco, one of the two forwards, along with Ben Daskovich on the front line. But Oliveris coming back here for the Mustangs. Oliveris on the far wing. Stops, turns, crosses out in front. Was looking there for Joey Lemansky. Got deflected back and picked up there by David Mollesey for Ringgold, who's able to straddle the far line, keep the ball in play, but it goes right back to Laurel Highlands. Settled down again by Radcliffe. Radcliffe working off to his right, going shoulder to shoulder there with Owen Haywood. Ball to flex high in the air and out here on the near side will be a Laurel Highlands throwing. Be sent back in by Caleb Yanoski over to Radcliffe. 
Settled back down again by Joey Lemansky. Lemansky on a one-hopper. That was a little sidewinder coming in there on Aiden Whaley and the freshman. Looking strong, able to make the save there. And keep us at one to nothing right now. David Mollesy sending it down the near side, looking for Alvarez. Nobody home. And Janoski plays it back to the sophomore keeper, Luke Simpson. Up to Joey Lemansky again. And that one will roll out on the far side as Ryan Cole will look for a loose ball. And we'll get our first change of the night as number 12, Elijah Callaway, will come into the match here for Ringgold. And Callaway will take the throw in. Quickly get it back off a of Mustang deflection. Settled off to Shane Seiler, who goes cross field on the near side. And a little touch there from Aiden Weaver. Rams looking to keep a little bit of the ball, but Oliveira is able to spin off of Owen Haywood and try to come forward. But again, sent away there from Shane Seiler off on the near side to Zachary Alvarez, who will lob it back as the Rams look to break. And Simpson way out. That could have got dangerous. A nice cover there from Ian Hamilton. To take the heat away there for the Mustangs after some good pressure on the Rams side. And sometimes you have those young keepers. They take chances. Maybe increase the heart rate of both Jerry Rogers Sr. and Jr. over on the Mustang bench. Good crowd on hand tonight as well. The Ringgold Rams brought down a good, good contingent of fans and the Mustang supporters out in full force as well. Here's Joey Glamansky trying to touch it forward. Seiler there to knock it away again for Ringgold. 30-35 left here in the first half. Laurel Highlands a one to nothing lead on the goal from Harry Radcliffe. Coming off a free kick, the blast about 19 yards out at the 35-47 mark of the first half, and that's where we stand right now. We'll get another throw in there from Tim Lasick. Lasick a little... Lob to Johns, back to Lasik, sends it down the far side. Oliver, Oliveira is trying to chase it down. Siler fronting him, and the ball will trickle out of play on the far side. And the ruling is here a corner kick for Laurel Highlands. Last touch by Ringgold going out, so Laurel Highlands will take that. And Joey Lemansky will put it down. So Lemansky from the far side, nice little lob here. Hamilton goes over his head, back to Thatcher Wilson, who tries to penetrate from the near side, but turned away as the Rams again try to break back on the counterattack there from Alvarez. Wilson again, good pressure, able to find it for a moment for Laurel Highlands, but we're deflecting it out. Aiden Weaver there for the Ringgold Rams. Caleb Yanoski takes this throw. Headed up top there by Oliveris, but Aiden Whaley able to corral it in there for the Rams. And Whaley on the toss out over to Shane Seiler. Settled back on the far side, Elijah Callaway, one of the new Rams who checked in a few minutes ago. Ringo looking for some possession here through the midfield. Another touch forward again from Seiler on there to Ben Daskovich. They'll send it down, looking for Alvarez here on the lob. Alvarez got tripped up, and that's going to be a foul on Caleb Yanowski. And a free kick here for the Rams. Coming in a very similar spot where Radcliffe scored on for the Mustangs. It'll be David Malisey to take it here for Ringel. Malisey from about 20 yards out here on the near side. We'll test Luke Simpson. Malisey with a run-up. A little lob into the box, but only Mustangs around and deflected back to Thatcher Wilson. A little poke there from Aiden Weaver. And going out of play here on the near side, it will be Ringgold's ball almost 12 minutes in. Still one to nothing. Laurel Highlands over Ringgold. Rams make a couple of changes on the far side. Waiting the throw in here from Weaver. And more high school soccer here on the South Union Township Sports Network tomorrow. It's the Laurel Highlands girls taking on Trinity and the girls program from Laurel Highlands out to a nice start this season as well. They're three and one overall, two and one in the conference. They blanked Albert Gallatin yesterday by a six nothing margin. We'll get another free kick here for Trinity, or excuse me, for Ringgold. And this one coming from about 27 yards out. We Shane Seiler to take it. So the Rams getting a little bit more of the ball here over the last five minutes. Siler, a nice little lob, just sent it wide. 
Certainly testing the sophomore keeper, Luke Simpson. Look at the snack bar. Good to see that back in full force for the 2021 season. And Jerry was telling me he hopes they sent a couple goodies up his way at halftime. There's Jerry Rogers. Speaking of Jerry's, sending it off to Elijah Callaway. will take the throw in. Back to Shane Seiler. A little poke forward. Nice little intercept there from Ben Diamond. Off the back heel of Harry Radcliffe, but kept alive. And Harry getting it there off the feed from Thatcher Wilson and sent forward looking for Nico Johns. Johns between defenders into the box. Nico a little lob down. Oliveras on the doorstep. Sends it in. So Oliveras... Picking up his first goal of the season, Nico Johns with the assist, and Laurel Highlands racing off to a 2 to nothing lead here at the 26-30 mark of the first half. Oliveras is first of the season, and Nico Johns picking up his third assist of the season. Laurel Highlands using the counterattack effectively there to go up 2 to nothing. Mustangs goal by Manuel Oliveras, assist by Nico Jones. Our Highlands looking for more. Stature Wilson down to Manny Oliveras again. Manny with a little cross going wide. No one home there on the back side, but Laurel Highlands with all the momentum at this juncture of the game. Up two to nothing. And talking to Mustang head coach Jerry Rogers, I asked him before the match, are you surprised due to the fact that you guys are a little down this year with some players being out here over the early stretch. They're three and one. He said, I'm pleasantly surprised. And why wouldn't he be? And the Mustangs, a good opportunity here to get to four and one overall and three and one in the conference. Still a lot of soccer, though, to play. Not even 15 minutes in, Oliveris putting it down again. And the Rams. Tyler Davis trying to work it out. Julie Baker checking in on our Facebook live stream. Hello, Julie. Thank you for watching high school soccer here on the South Union Township Sports Network here today. One of four Section 3 3A games going on tonight. Thomas Jefferson cross town at Uniontown. Trinity also in Fayette County. York Run taking on Albert Gallatin and Washington at Bell Vernon. And Ratcliffe to take another corner here for the Stangs. Harry with the service, sends it high on the back side. A little header from Hamilton going wide, and that's his specialty area of expertise, scoring on those headers off the corner kicks. He's done that a number of times in his Mustang career. Missing out there, but a good effort. Shane Seiler to take the goal kick. Siler will bounce down, lobbed high in the air there from Joey Lomansky back on to Radcliffe. And then regaining there is Owen Haywood for Ringle. Back to Ryan Cole, and Cole with a little lob back on the far side. Mustangs try to knock it down, but it's Ringle keeping possession. They were trying that little lob down to Alvarez on the near wing. They've attempted that a couple of times so far tonight. Has not worked effectively as Laurel Highlands has that well scouted defensively and his lob back over to Harry Radcliffe again heads it along, stays with it Radcliffe into the box, looking for a cross and they're going to rule him out and another goal kick of coming here for the Ringgold Rams if you're watching this replay on Atlantic Broadband or Armstrong Cable, I'd like to remind you that all of our games are now available live online, just log on to facebook.com slash South Union TV give us a follow, give us a like you can even sign up. Anytime we go live, you'll get notified. You're in a busy week. For you soccer fans, we're on with the girls tomorrow. We had the Laurel Highlands girls on last week in their big 13-1 win over Uniontown. We'll have them again tomorrow. Should be a test against the Trinity Hillers, who are always strong. Remember, Trinity knocked Laurel Highlands out of the WPIL playoffs a few years back. We brought you that game here on the South Union Township Sports Network. Down at Hiller Field. And that nice muscle lighting down there. Always a great place to call a game. Radcliffe to take another corner kick. And another lob. Deflected down by Johns. Kept alive. Wilson there. 
and he was turned away by Aiden Whaley. Mustang still buzzing. That shot attempt from Lemansky was blocked down. Give Whaley a lot of credit. Holding his ground, stopping Wilson from point-blank range. There's a look there at Ringgold's second-year head coach, Matthew Snyder, assisted by Nathaniel Patton and Brett Cola Giovanni. Another one going wide. And the Rams, they've been consistent over the years. Again, we mentioned last time was their first time. Last year was their first time missing out on the postseason since 2015. They're contenders year in and year out in Section 3 and 3A. We mentioned a new addition. Usually you don't see the sections getting changed up much during the years they do not look at the new enrollment and do new placing, but they did with high school soccer. In the offseason, and the Washington Little Prexy is now a member of the conference as Joey Lemansky nearly made it 3 to nothing, Just sending it over the crossbar a little high there. But Lemansky, another good look for Laurel Highlands. And Washington actually replacing Greensburg-Salem in the conference. They shifted the Golden Lions out east. So it's Bell Vernon, Albert Gallatin, Laurel Highlands, TJ Trinity, Ringgold, Washington, and Uniontown. The team's playing 14 conference games this year. Yanoski retreating, sending it back to Luke Simpson, who blasted out here on the near side. There's Thatcher Wilson again. Radcliffe looking to chase. A little bit too far and out of his range. And a throw and going the other way here for Ringel. Almost midway through this first half. 20-39. Left here in the first half of this match. Brian Morozak alongside Jerry Dupay. Nice to have you along with us. That one picked up by Aiden Fosnod, who just entered on the Ringgold side. Fosnod, a nice run here, keeping it alive. Sending it off on the far wing to Noah Barno. Back to Fosnod. Ian Hamilton defending, and both Barno and Fosnot, new entries off the Rams bench. A little fresh step, creating a little energy here. Spinning it back, looking for Alvarez. Thatcher Wilson, though, there for Laurel Highlands. And one back by Aiden Weaver of Ringgold. Over to Alvarez, was blocked there by Yanoski. And Manny staying with it. Keeping it alive, a little lob forward again, looking for Wilson. Went off of his back after the Clearance attempt from Seiler went out of play. It'll be a ring goal throwing. I don't think the Mustangs have gotten to their bench yet. And we mentioned they're a little short-handed here today. A couple of starters out of the lineup. Matt Phillips, along with Carson Seaman and Matt Lucas. Lucas was injured on Saturday. Hope he's back soon. That one's picked up there by Elijah Calloway. And angled back over to Thatcher Wilson again, who's been very involved here out in the field for Laurel Highlands. Ram up ended. We play on. No foul called. And that one rolling back to Aiden Whaley. I'll scoop it up again. A big spot for Whaley. Freshman getting the varsity start and goal for Matt Snyder's squad. Nice header there from Caleb Janoski. The fans have been quite vocal so far on this one. Alvarez, low ball coming forward, again turned away. Rams with a little header there, able to keep it in play. And a little body bump there from Radcliffe on Alvarez will draw a foul. Free kick. Free kick coming back here for the Rams. And it'll be Shaden, Shane Seiler taking the free kick. Seiler, a little line drive forward. Radcliffe deflecting it down there for Laurel Highlands. Mustangs back on the ball with a little open field ahead here on the run. Oliveira's up ahead. It's Lemansky on the run. Sends it in Manny's direction. Goes through Oliveira's and coming out there, Whaley. 
Able to scoop up the loose ball inside the 18-yard box. Don't forget to get your 50-50. Keep it alive there for the Rams. 50-50. Winning number will be drawn at halftime. The jackpot currently sits at $110. Well, lobbed in the air again. A little collision there on the back line between Ben Diamond and one of the Rams. That was 18 Nick Evans, and Evans will pick up the foul. And Kate Ruva Caba, his sister Jaden's done a nice job in goal for the Laurel Highlands girls team, will take the free kick. And Kate will blast it down the far side over to Nico Johns. Good defense there from Tyler Davis, winning it back again for Ringle. Low ball, sent forward there from Aiden Fosnott, but again cleared away by Laurel Highlands. And it's Lemansky again. Joey now a senior for Laurel Highlands. Over to Nico Johns, going shoulder to shoulder there with Davis staying with it. And the little scooper picked up there from Whaley. The Rams defenders want a little push there on the Mustangs inside the 18-yard box. But nothing called. Referees, for the most part, are letting the guys play here today. It is good to see as long as they can keep it clean. Another big collision there. And as rolling down was Ruva Caba. Mustangs finding the loose ball again. Low ball down to Oliveris. Oliveris spinning it off of the defender, Siler, keeping it alive there with Wilson. A little give and go, but it never got back in Oliveris' direction. Ringgold clearing it out. Mustangs trying to go quickly, but Laurel Highlands was already set to make two substitutions, which could have worked against them there. As Nico Johns will check out along with Ruba Cobb, I probably just want to make sure Caton's all right after he rolled down earlier. And Caleb Yanoski will take the throw in. Sent back there to Ben Diamond. Touch from Joey Lemansky. Over to Ian Hamilton. And Cooper Hunt seeing his first match action. Sophomore wearing double zero for Laurel Highlands. A little poke ahead. And lobbed on the far wing. And breaking down there was Tim Lasik. Ball going out of play. will be Laurel Highlands throwing. Bobby Ruggieri also says, let's go Mustangs on our live stream. Thanks for watching as always, Bobby. One of our regulars. There's Hamilton double teamed. Trying to keep it alive. Rams get a little poke there from Fosnott, but not enough to keep possession. And Hamilton, again, looking for Thatcher Wilson, has really given the Mustangs some great minutes on the field here today. Going off of Laurel Highlands and out. The throw in was taken by Aiden Weaver. Good to see solid numbers for both Laurel Highlands and Ringgold. Each team about 30 players on the squad. Nothing wrong with that. Alvarez on the throw-in. We had two balls on the field there for a moment. And Ben Diamond retreating with Fosnott in his face. Be off of the Mustangs and out. Be a ring goal throw-in. Taken by Zach Alvarez. And a lot back to Fosnott. Into the box, was bodied there by Hunt. Partially fanned there on the clear. Foz not trying to keep it alive, and Laurel Highland's able to clear the zone. This one will roll down the near boundary and outs. Be a throw in for ring goal. It's been a pretty quick moving first half. Six shots, two goals on the Laurel Highland side. Don't have a clear shot registered yet by the Ramps. Really have not tested Luke Simpson yet, who's only seen the ball a couple of times so far in this match. Lemansky knocking it down, trying to stay with it. Defending there, Owen Haywood. who win the ball back for the Rams, but unable to keep meaningful possession as Laurel Highlands buzzing again. Back into the box, working hard there, Courtney Weston. Another new entry for Laurel Highlands, Weston a sophomore. Easy to spot him with the hair on the field. 
be a throw in for Elijah Callaway and Ringgold. And Callaway will take it. Little bounce forward. The Rams played back on the defensive line looking for possession. It goes right back to Joey Lemansky, who settles it down to Thatcher Wilson. And now Joey again. Fronted there by Owen Haywood. Gets a little help from Tim Lasick. Another little lob back on the far side from Cooper Hunt. Oliveira's looking for it. But it's found and cleared by Owen Haywood. He will send it out on the far side. Mustangs shuffle the deck again. Two more changes as we go under 12 minutes left here in the opening half. Again, our sponsors here on the South Union Township Sports Network, the Sprouse Insurance Group and insurance agent David Hughes. United Bank, Davis and Davis Attorneys at Law, Smith Lewis Chess, CPAs in Uniontown, Jason Scott, South Union Township Supervisor, Southwestern Gastrointestinal Specials, SWGI in Uniontown, Zebley Mahalov and White, Uniontown Business and Bankruptcy Attorneys, UPMC, Centers for Rehab Services, on Wayland Smith Drive, Jim Burns Director, South Union Township Supervisors, Robert Schiffbauer, Rick Vernon and Jason Scott, and Chessler's Fine Furniture, Pittsburgh Road, Union Town in front of the Fayette Plaza, where customers send their friends. Please support the businesses that support us and allow you, allow us to bring you youth sports here in the South Union Township Sports Network. A little battle here on the near boundary. Tyler Davis, a little collision there with Yanoski, who keeps it alive again for Laurel Highlands. A nice little run there into the box. Like the hustle on the Laurel Highlands side. As Courtney Weston trying to surprise the keeper, Aiden Whaley, who was up to the challenge there for the Rams. But the Rams have to get their offensive attack going without a shot on goal so far in this match. And Laurel Highlands breaking back again. Nico Johns, a little cross out in front. And that one just going through the goal box and out. Again, you had Olivares on the doorstep, Laurel Highlands. Unable to finish, but a good opportunity. Three quarters of the way through this first half as we've reached the half hour mark. Laurel Highland still up two to nothing. Ringgold making a change. Zachary Whaley checking in, replacing Zachary Alvarez. Zach Whaley, only a freshman. I have to think him and Aiden might be twin brothers out there. Aiden and goal. Both freshmen. Throw and taken there by Caleb Yanoski. Put down by Oliveris. Playing the back again to Joey Lemansky. Top of the 18. Let's it go for Nico Johns, who finds the back of the net. So a little delay. They laid it back. And Nico Johns with the finish. And just like that, it's 3 to nothing. Laurel Highlands goal coming at the 941 mark of the first half. And for Nico Johns, that's his second goal of the season. First of the night. And the Mustangs on top by a score of three to nothing. And I think it was Lemansky that was the last to touch it on the way back to Johns. We'll try to verify that. And if the assist does go to Lemansky, that'll be a second assist of the season. The Mustangs now up three to nothing. Mustang Only sitting pretty. By number 22, Nico Johns. Assist, Joey Lemansky. Play whistled down. Well, no one argued on the assist announcement, so looks like we're correct there with Joey Lemansky. And Shane Seiler will put it down here on the Ringgold side. Playing it back to Chance Capacato. Again, like the hustle there from Courtney Weston. Capacato again on the clear on the far side. Rams have to get it going without a shot. Mustang seven shots, three goals already on the board. Offense just has not been there on the Ringgold side. Rams will take the throw in from... Ryan Cole had to push it back and a nice little intercept on the Laurel Highland side again. Tim Lasick 
Laying it down, pushed out by Shane Seiler. And angled back there by Tyler Davis. Davis settles on the near side. Down to Aiden Weaver. And a little pressure there from Andrew Mykovic, who just checked in on the Laurel Highland side. We'll push up to Josh Proud. So now we're seeing some new entries for the Mustangs. Laurel Highlands could afford to do that right now. Up three goals in this match. Yanoski going cross field on the far side. In traffic, looking there for LASIK, trying to go between defenders, and the play whistled down, saying Tim might have pushed off there, trying to go in between Noah Barno and Ryan Cole. It'll be a free kick here for the Rams coming back. New field certainly looking good here at Laurel Highlands High School. Now the athletic staff, Mark John, the athletic director, Mike Smith, assistant athletic director, happy to finally get it in. And Laurel Highlands will play their first home football game next Friday against West Mifflin. This Friday's game at Ringgold will be their fourth straight on the road to start the season. So it's also nice for the kids to finally get an opportunity to practice on this field as well. Tyler Davis, nice little run forward here. Through ball, looking for Whaley, again scooped up by Luke Simpson. So we're going to our seven minutes left here in the first half. Lobbed ahead to Josh Proud. Played back off to Shane Seiler. Cleared out by Chance Capacato. Ben Diamond trying to settle it down. Another low ball coming forward here. Zachary Whaley, a nice run. Whaley top of the 18, the blast, and Ringgold gets on the scoreboard. Zach Whaley with some fresh legs. A nice run forward, and the Rams on the scoreboard for the first time tonight here at the 618 mark of the first half. So credit head coach Matt Snyder, good substitution there. Putting Whaley in. Comes through with those fresh legs. Nice run forward shot taken top of the 18, beating Simpson. And it's 3-1. to one. Now we'll see if we get some of those starters back in on the Laurel Highland side. Josh Proud will get things restarted. Pulling it back to Nico Johns. Looking ahead for Radcliffe. Push down to Mayakovic. And the Rams find the ball again. So Ringo, a little momentum. Their first shot of the night. Their first goal of the night. And they're back to within two. Buzzing a little bit right now. Let's see if Laurel Highlands has an answer back. That one cleared out by Caleb Janowski. Ringo goal by number 24, Zach Whaley. And sometimes those fresh legs... Make a difference out there. It's Tyler Davis between defenders trying to keep it alive. Davis staying with it. Ben Diamond on the defense there for Laurel Highlands. Looked like the ball was out, and so now finally get a whistle. And for the Ringgold fans complaining, the ball was clearly out on our TV view. Rams, though, knock it down again. Here's Owen Haywood. Losing it there on the intercept from Nico Johns, who's coming back, playing a little defense here for Laurel Highlands. But again, the Mustang run slowed down there. We approach the five-minute mark of the first half. It's crashing out of play there, Rubik Haba and Nick Evans. The Rams will turn and clear into the Mustang bench. Rubik Haba will take the throw in. Highlands a little poke. Down to Joey Lemansky. Too far there for Courtney Weston. Again, scooped up by Aiden Whaley. Whaley with the blast, top of the box. Go back to the Mustang defensive line. A ringled winning possession again, and look out here. Loose is Zach Whaley, but coming out, Luke Simpson on the clear. And they're springing Whaley in the Mustangs. You're going to have to pick him up on some of those runs. They're leaving him unmarked. And he's burning Laurel Highlands on the counterattack. Knocked down there by Ben Diamond. 
Ball goes out of play. On the ring goal throw in, and over the last 10 minutes or so, we've certainly seen the Rams getting a lot more of the ball than they did over the first 20 minutes of this match. Noah Barno pushing it ahead. And I mentioned early on, even Laurel Highland started off 2 0. 14 minutes in, a lot of soccer to play. They play 80 minutes. Anything can happen as Zach Whaley again, top of the 18. Good header out from Caleb Yanoski, but the Rams again keep possession, at least momentarily, on the near side before Harry Radcliffe wins it back. Blasts it forward, looking there for Josh Proud. A roll back to Aiden Whaley. You get both of those Whaleys, only freshmen. Certainly a bright future ahead. Got another run, and look out there, a little contact, and that was inside the box. Ian Hamilton sending down one of the Rams. No whistle, and Laurel Highland's fortunate there. Really have to be careful inside that 18-yard box. You make contact, and a foul's called. It's a penalty kick. And they're putting it on the dot. Another little cross here from Ringgold's Elijah. Callaway has played well. Another collision inside the box. Ball coming free there to Zacharias Henderson, who couldn't take a or get a shot away. And the Mustangs finally get another clear there from Nico Johns. They've been forced to put Johns back into more of a midfield and defensive role here with a little bit of this added pressure that we've seen on the Rams side. 2-16 left here in the first half. Laurel Highlands up two, but the Rams with the momentum right now. A little header there from Chance Capacato. And Capacato, a little push there on Lemansky. He'll pick up the foul. And Laurel Highland just going to take the quick throw in there. Down in traffic. They're looking for Weston. Juan back out. By Shane Seiler. Played back over to Aiden Whaley. Now on the near wing, Noah Barno. A little open space ahead. We'll bounce it forward. On the settle down there, Weaver. 95 seconds left until halftime. Down to Owen Haywood. Davis another touch. Fronted there by Harry Radcliffe. They play catch on the backside there. Davis finds it again. Be huge for Ringgold to get another goal here. Going to the locker room. and They're going to spring Zachary Whaley again. It's on sides. Whaley on the near wing looking for the cross. Gets a little help. Pulls it back now to... Noah Barno, and Barno sets it up on the backside a little too high there. Is unable to knock that one down was Nick Evans. And it'll go out as we approach the one-minute mark. One minute left here in the first half. Floral Highlands up 3-1. to one. It'll be Luke Simpson to take the goal kick here for the Mustangs. Simpson sends it down. Knocked down there by Owen Haywood. On the far wing, a little contact, and they're going to get Ruva Kaba on the foul on Nick Evans. Now Ringgold needs to go quickly. 25 seconds left before halftime. Aiden Fosnott will take the free kick. Fosnott with a little lob headed there by the Mustangs. Fosnott trying to regain. 15 seconds left. Lob towards the box. Ball comes free. Look out here on the clearance right on the goal line. Great defense there from Laurel Highlands. I believe that was Ben Diamond on that back line, number 11, saving a goal defensively. And we'll go to halftime with Laurel Highlands leading Ringgold by a score of 3-1. to one. Now That last five minutes of that first half really got tight. 3-1 Laurel Highlands over Ringgold. We're at halftime. We'll recap the first half numbers for you in a moment here on the South Union Township Sports Network. This is Dr. Fraser Stokes. Did you know that colorectal cancer is the second leading cancer killer in America, or that it can be prevented by removing polyps during a 30-minute colonoscopy? At SWGI, our board-certified gastroenterologists, Drs. Ruth Hart Calabrese Hoppe and I, 
encourage you to consider a screening colonoscopy. Call 724-437-7677 or visit swgispecialists.com. The key to success in life is teamwork. On and off the field, in the workplace, in the home, in our schools. Teamwork gets it done. The world of competitive sports offers many good things, the most important of which is teamwork. Individual talent may win a few games, but teamwork wins championships. Go team! Go Laurel Highlands Mustangs! This positive message has been brought to you and paid for by Jason Scott. is not something that anyone wants to do. Good people sometimes run into hard times, and they need help. Hi, I'm Dan White with the law offices of Zebley, Mahalib, and White, and I'm here to help. If you're faced with insurmountable debt and are out of options and you need help, give our office a call today. Allow us to help you understand your rights and options under the law. Filing bankruptcy is not the end of the road, and if you're struggling with debt, it very well could be a new beginning. So stop worrying and take action. Give our office a call today at 724-439-9200 or click on zeblaw.com for more information. Zebley, Mahalib, and White, local attorneys helping local people. Let us help you fix your life. Zebley, Mahalib, and White. It's gonna be all, it's gonna be all right. Bad day at the office? Bad day behind the wheel? Hey, stuff happens, even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Get Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. Gives you a great rate that stays put until you change a car, driver, or your address. Plus, seriously good service. Now that's something to smile about. Your Erie agent in Uniontown and Ross Traver Township is Sprowls Insurance Group. 724-437-9812 or go to SprowlsInsurance.com. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage. It's not... We're back here on the South Union Township Sports Network. Laurel Island's a 3-1 to one lead at halftime here over the Ringgold Rams. Harry Radcliffe got the scoring started, a free kick from 19 yards out at the 35-47 mark of the first half to give Laurel Highlands a 1-0 lead. Then Manny Oliver has made it 2-0. A goal at the 26-30 mark. Nico Johns on the assist. It was 2-0 Laurel Highlands. Johns then got his first goal of the night at the 941 mark. Joey Glomanski on the assist. 3-0 Laurel Highlands. And Zach Whaley off the ring gold bench, getting the Rams on the scoreboard at the 618 mark of the first half to make it 3-1. Laurel Highlands leading ring gold. A reminder, if you're watching this replay on Atlantic Broadband or Armstrong Cable, I'd like to let you know that all of our games are now available online live. Just log on to facebook.com slash TV. Give us a follow. Give us a like. You can even sign up for notifications anytime we go live here on the South Union Township Sports Network. Also have to thank our South Union Township Soccer sponsors for the season, including the Sprouse Insurance Group and insurance agent David Hughes, United Bank, Davis and Davis Attorneys at Law, Smith Lewis Chess CPAs in Uniontown, Jason Scott, South Union Township Supervisor, Southwestern Gastrointestinal Specials, SWGI in Uniontown, Zebley Mahalov and White, Uniontown Business and Bankruptcy Attorneys, UPMC Centers for Rehab Services on Whalen Smith Drive, Jim Burns Director, South Union Township Supervisors Robert Schiffbauer, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott, and Chessler's Fine Furniture, Pittsburgh Road, Uniontown in front of the Fayette Plaza, where customers send their friends. In your halftime score, Laurel Highlands 3, Ringgold 1, second half match action comes your way next. You're on the South Union Township Sports Network. Attorneys from all over the state and nation advertise in southwestern Pennsylvania for personal injury and workers' comp cases, but most of them send their assistants to do the legwork. You might not even meet your attorney until your first hearing. We're local attorneys, Davis and Davis. We meet directly with our clients, including free consultation, and there are no fees until you receive money on your case. If you've been injured, 
Call Davis and Davis, representing you and your neighbors yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Call 724-437-2799. Kessler's Furniture at 601 Pittsburgh Street, Uniontown has been in business since 1950 and has a wide variety of furniture for all of your needs. At Chessler's, they have a wide assortment of living room recliners, kitchen sets, bedroom mattresses, and accessories that can decorate your home for years to come. Choose from many companies, including Lazy Boy, Best, King Hickory, Hammery, Lancer, Wildwood, Von Bassett, and White Dove. Chessler's also services what they sell. Stop into Chesler's Fine Furniture, Route 51 north of Uniontown, and see Kim, Christy, Ted, and Rich. They'll be happy to help you with all of your needs. Chesler's Furniture, where customers send their friends. At what point did everything change? When did service get taken out of service industries? It's too bad. Because people are busy these days, at life, at work, at play. When it comes to your hard-earned money, you want service, real service, from a person you know and a face you trust. At a bank where changing with the times doesn't mean leaving people behind. We're proud to be a part of your community. We're United Bank, at your service. Getting collection calls, finding bills in the mail you can't pay. Are you expecting shutoff or foreclosure notices? If you're in financial trouble, you need to know that there is help under the law that will help protect you and your assets. Hi, this is attorney Chuck Zebley with Zebley Mahalov and White. Allow us to help you protect yourself. If you're in debt and have no way out, let us help you understand your options under the federal bankruptcy laws. Filing bankruptcy is not the end of the road. For many, it's a fresh start and a new beginning. So give our office a call today, 724-439-9200. Or visit our website at zeblaw.com. Zebley, Mahalov & White in Uniontown. Local attorneys helping local people. Let us help you fix your life. Zebley, Mahalov & White. It's gonna be all, it's gonna be all. This is Dr. Fraser Stokes. Have you ever felt something stick in your chest when swallowing? This can be caused by a narrowing in your esophagus from inflammation, scar tissue, or rarely a tumor. At SWGI, our board-certified gastroenterologist, Dr. Ruth Art Calabrese Hoppy and I specialize in the care of swallowing disorders. Call 724-437-7677 or visit swgispecialists.com. Sam Davis was a gift from heaven. He knows the law and the court system unlike anyone else I've ever met or seen. Sam helped me get through the federal court system with the best possible outcome. Davis and Davis, personal injury and workers comp. We at Davis and Davis are humbled by what our clients have to say about us. If you've been injured, call me, Jim Davis, for a free consultation. We have been helping injured people for over 40 years. Call 724-437-2799. Back here at Mustang Field, Laurel Highlands High School just about ready to start the second half. Good start for the Mustangs tonight, leading the Ringgold Rams by a score of 3-1. to one. Laurel Highlands looking for their sixth straight trip to the WPIL playoffs. In fact, if you go all the way back to 2012, the only year the Mustangs missed out on the playoffs was 2015. And Laurel Highlands certainly off to a positive start again this season. Laurel Highlands looking for their first playoff win, though. Since 2016, when they knocked off Greensburg Salem here at Laurel Highlands High School in a first round game before losing to Thomas Jefferson in the quarterfinals at Elizabeth Forward. So here we go. Second half underway. Rams now working left to right. Down two goals. Laurel Highlands jumped out to a three to nothing lead, and Zach Whaley off the Ringgold bench getting the Rams back to within two at three to one. And that goal with 618 left in the first half. And we know if you're watching online that the scoreboard you see below says first. It is the second half. There's just an issue we have with the 
hookup. We're tied into the scoreboard here at Laurel Highlands, and for whatever reason, even though that scoreboard says second, our graphics are still saying first. We can't figure out why, but nonetheless, it's the second half, so just ignore that if you can. And Laurel Highlands up 3-1 to one here over Ringle. Rams will send it in from the far side. Chance Capacato will take the throw in. Get headed out there by Caleb Yanoski. Knocked down by Zach Alvarez. And all across there again from Capacato going all the way through. A goal kick here for Luke Simpson. And the Mustangs just over a minute in to the second half. Simpson getting his second start of the year, third match he's seen action in during the Mustangs' 2 to nothing loss against Bell Vernon on Saturday. Thatcher Wilson was in goal for Laurel Highlands, picked up a red card. So the Mustangs had to play a man short the rest of the way. Simpson came on to relief Wilson in goal for that match. And then after the red card... Wilson could not play on Monday against Trinity. And the Mustangs utilizing Wilson in the field here today being a little shorthanded. With guys like Seaman and Phillips along with that one goes right off the crossbar on that shot. But the Mustangs being short a few guys here today. Laurel Highlands putting Thatcher Wilson into the field. It's paid dividends as he's given Laurel Highlands some good minutes here tonight as well. Of course, Matt Lucas, the other Mustang, out of the lineup here today. Yanoski a little poke back. Oliveris touching it along. Down to Ratcliffe who was tripped up. No foul called. And, again, that was right at the edge of the box. And now we'll get a whistle. The ball deflected out on the far side. Now a yellow card comes out. Now is that going to go on Oliveris? Manny making his way to the Laurel Highlands bench. Yes, the yellow card caution issued to Manny Oliveris here at the 37-13 mark of the second half. We see our first card of the night. Referee's booking it. Give me a free kick here for Ringgold. After Oliveira's got booked, and he'll have to sit out for five minutes, he'll be able to return at the 32-13 mark of the second half. The Mustangs retreating here. Low ball back to Simpson. Trying to set it up again. That one going off the body of Nico Johns. Was trying to settle it off there to Tim Lasick. The Rams get possession there from Ryan Cole. And knocked down by Laurel Highlands and Kate Rulva Kaba down that ear wing. Little collision. Once again, the winning the ball goes out of play off of five, four, nine, Ringgold and outs. And Rulva Kaba will take the throw in. Young lady here in front of the media center in a red shirt. Lomansky trying to spin it off there to Nico Johns again cleared. Ben Diamond retreating and on the charge there, Nick Evans. On the Ringgold side, Diamond trying to body block him. Ball goes out of play. Mustangs putting their case for possession. It will be Laurel Highland's ball. As Diamond sends it back in, looking there for Harry Radcliffe. Again, deflect it out. Again, we'll stay with the Mustangs. Laurel Highland's trainer, Bill Logue, going over there to retrieve that ball. Again, down the far boundary. On the run there. Andrew Mayakovich looking to center, defending Chase, Chance Capacato there for Ringgold. And again, sent out. Caleb Yanoski will fire it back in. Yanoski on the lob. Goes into the box and will roll back. 
Aiden Whaley. Whaley on the blast back to center. Rams pick up possession on the far side. That's Zach Whaley, who scored the only ring gold goal of the match. Two Mustangs around him. Zach trying to stay with it. Trying to push it back there to Owen Haywood. Play whistled down. I think we're going to get a foul here on Laurel Highlands. Harry Radcliffe didn't like the call. And the Rams down two. We'll have a free kick just outside the box. Be taken here by Shane Seiler on a great angle. See what Seiler could do. Be tough to go direct. Seiler, another lob, needs a header and goes over the head of the closest ram around. That was Noah Barno. I need to leap about eight feet off the ground to get that one. Luke Simpson will put it back down for another goal kick here for the Mustangs. And headed there by Barno. That one deflecting back to Ruba Kaba. Trying to push it ahead to Harry Radcliffe. Won back by Owen Haywood. In traffic up to Aiden Fosnott. And sent out of play here in the near side. Rams ball again. Ryan Cole taking the throw in. Was headed there by Ruva Kaba. Again, a lob back here down the near boundary. Pace of play has settled down here a little bit to start the second half compared to what we've had at stages during the first half. Just as I say that, it will run towards the goal and a big time collision there between. Harry Radcliffe and Aiden Whaley, and that should be a foul there on Whaley, maybe even a yellow card and a penalty kick here for the Mustangs. Whaley made contact there with Radcliffe before getting to the ball. They should put this one right down on the spot, no question about that one. We have penalty kick here for Laurel Highlands. Radcliffe already scored off of a free kick. That one was about 19 yards out. This one on the spot, 12 yards out. To try to extend Laurel Highland's lead of 4-1. to one. Radcliffe looking for a second of the night. So here we go. Radcliffe facing the freshman. Takes the shot, puts it low, and scores on the near side. So Harry Radcliffe off the penalty kick, getting the brace tonight. Scoring here at the 33-16 mark of the second half, ex extending the Laurel Highlands lead to 4-1. to one. And for Radcliffe, that's now his fourth goal of the season to go along with two assists. And the Laurel Highlands lead now up to 4-1 to one here at the 33-16 mark of the second half. So Laurel Highlands being aggressive, getting inside the box. And the keeper, Aiden Whaley, making contact there with Radcliffe. Radcliffe awarded with the penalty kick, taking advantage. And now Laurel Highlands seven minutes into the second half. Mustang goal on the Up by a score of 4-1. to one. Harry Radcliffe. Look at Jerry Rogers, Jr. Handing it out there to Caleb Yanoski who gets things restarted over to Joey Lemansky. Lemansky working to his left, up the field, a little poke forward, knocked down by Nico Johns, keeping it alive, spinning in the box. There is Mayakovich, and that one scooped up by Whaley, who might have been clipped up high. And might have been one of his own defenders that hit him on the retreats. Whaley now with a blast back towards center. Ringgold down three. That ball goes out of play here in the near side. Nico Johns to reload. Sending it off there to Ruba Kaba. Double team back to Nico. Our Highlands can waste a little time off the clock now, protecting a three-goal lead. 
Don't have to go in a full park the bus mode at this juncture of the game, but still have a little three-goal cushion. A deflection off of Lemansky. Poked forward as Owen Haywood tried to put it down and drew the foul. And Ringgold will have a free kick. We'll also have to say hello in our live stream to James Hersick watching the broadcast. Caroline also says hello and go Nico. Tyler Davis goes low. Rams on the run up and that could be another foul. It is Radcliffe on the trip up there of Haywood. And we'll get a free kick here. About 36 yards from goal. Be Shane Seiler to take it. Seiler, a little line drive. That one goes wide of the goal. Simpson lets it go. Should be a goal kick coming back here for the Mustangs. Play whistled down just as Simpson took the goal kick. Not sure what we got going on here. We had a substitution coming in late. Didn't see anyone checking in. Nonetheless, might have had two balls on the field again. Now Simpson this time will go short. Off to Ben Diamond. Feeling a little pressure there from Cody Shaponic. And the Rams pick it up again. Chase Capacato. And another collision as a Mustang went down hard. Should be a free kick here for Laurel Highlands. Stadger Wilson took a little shot in the head. And Caleb Yanoski take this free kick. Good boots. Oliveris with the rundown. It just rolls back into. Aiden Whaley. Played back to center. Settled down again to Harry Radcliffe. Low ball going through Oliveris. Tyler Davis sending it back in Whaley's direction. Partial fan there. Johns finds the top of the 18. He'll spin back off to his left. Lemansky takes the shot, but sends it high and wide. The Mustangs buzzing again after a little bit of a missed clear there. Mustang's able to generate a shot. Our Highland's still up three at four to one. Two from Harry Radcliffe, one from Oliveras, one from Nico John, Zach Whaley, the lone goal of the match. On the ring gold side, Radcliffe tripped up again, and now Laurel Highland Janoski came in. That could be a yellow. I think Janoski was trying to protect his man. Kind of the third man in the skirmish. Let's see what we got here, Jerry. Look at the official here. Injury timeout. I want to see if we're going to get a card here, though, on Yanoski. The injured Ram is Owen Haywood. Bill Logue, Mustang trainer, out to look at him. And they got Yanoski out of the skirmish pretty quickly. Two officials talking things over. They've yet to show a card yet. They might warn a yellow, not sure about a red. We haven't seen any card, though, thrown out yet. Now they're going to bring out official motioning towards just one of the substitutions, I guess, here for the injured player, Haywood. I'm quite surprised we have not seen a card. And I thought Yanoski decked him pretty good. And he was trying to protect his teammate. I'll give him that. You have Matt Snyder coming out. I think he's a little upset. I would be too. A 
Looks like we're just going to play on after the injury stoppage. No foul call. 28-11. Left here in the second half. We get this match resumed as the officials still over talking to there's Matt Snyder, the Ringgold head coach. As we said, he has every right, I think, to be upset. So we'll just get back to the game. A throw in here from Noah Barno. Now another stoppage. Don't be Here we go. We got a yellow card here on Matt Snyder. The Ringgold coach was still barking over there. And he's going to pick up a yellow card for unsportsmanlike conduct here at the 27-58 mark of the second half. So the Ringgold bench given a yellow card. And now the official calling both Jerry Rogers and Matt Snyder over. Snyder's going to have to watch his P's and Q's the rest of the way. I think the most famous coaching card that we saw here at Laurel Highland since, at least in my day, doing games. And there's Coach Snyder still giving it to the official a little bit. And I wasn't there the night it happened, but Gary Frankhauser was. But Jerry Rogers Jr. got ejected. I think it was a game against Trinity. Actually went over and threw the flag on the far side. And after he threw it on the field, went back and put it back nicely. But Jerry really earned the card, especially on the way out. So here we go. We're back to soccer. Three-goal margin on the scoreboard. Mustangs up 4-1. to one. And Ryan Cole will pull it back here to Aiden Fosnott. A little lob inside the box. Mustangs looking to clear and apologize for the little ringing tone going through on the air. Try to get that taken off as soon as possible. And another collision as we resume play here. You had Ringgold's Noah Barno colliding with Kaden Rulvacaba. They're going to rule the foul on Rulvacaba. No card issued. And Ringgold will have a free kick here with Shane Seiler. Now Seiler will take the free kick. Mustang set up a three-man wall out in front. Now they're going to push the wall back ten yards. A good opportunity here for Ringgold to get back to within two. Seiler discussing a little strategy there with Tyler Davis. Don't be surprised if Davis takes this. Seiler on the fake will send it over to Davis. Davis on the cross out in front. A little deflection there from Laurel Highlands in the zone cleared by Nico Johns. Rams get back on it. A quick clear out again from Ulvacaba. Ringgold trying to go quickly here on the near side. Again, John's forcing it out over to Manny Oliveris, who's back on the field after his yellow card earlier on this half. And Laurel Highlands with some numbers coming back. Good break there. They had Thatcher Wilson up there with Joey Lemansky, but the Rams able to get possession back. And that's Zach Alvarez coming back. Was looking there for Foz, not went all the way through, and Nico Johns finds it again there for the Mustangs. Johns turning back as the Mustangs look for possession. Over to Ben Diamond. A little poke ahead down on the far side, and coming free again is Thatcher Wilson. Wilson on the far wing. Wilson on the cross. Oliveira's on the doorstep, and a clear. The Mustangs are saying it went in. But the goal was not signaled. We don't have video review. 
here for high school soccer. We'll stay at 4-1. to one. And a good clear there from the Rams' back line. And now you have Zach Whaley trying to lead another rush up the field. Was looking there from Davis, deflected back. Rams find it again. A little blast there from about 35 yards out, just going wide here on the near side. So it'll be a Laurel Highlands goal kick with 24-34 left on a running clock here in the second half. Mustangs up by a score of 4-1. to one. Luke Simpson. Take another goal kick. Knocked down by Oliveris. On the chip down to the far side. Thatcher Wilson trying to outrun Capicato. Wilson stays with it. A little lob. John's there on the doorstep. Couldn't find the ball. Well drawn up. Mustangs just couldn't execute. Rams get it back here on a throw-in. So we have under 24 minutes left in regulation time. He's sent in here by Ryan Cole. And quickly deflected out. Kaiten Ruva Kaba will lob this one back in. Again pushed out. And we'll get a Mustang throw in after all of that. Tim Lasik over to Johns. And now Lasik again. Did he get tripped up? Looked like all ball. No foul call. Lasik's down. Might have got chipped down there pretty good. Thought it just might have been a little acting at first, but he's actually, he's hurt. Hope he's all right. And the Mustangs can't afford to go down any more men. Already being shorthanded. The new sport turf, certainly nice here at Mustang Field. I notice it's a little more grassy than the older surface. You have the turf maybe a little higher. It could just be because it's new, hasn't been worn down at all yet, but that was my initial indication of how it felt just compared to the former surface here, and they'll check LASIK out, make sure he's all right on the Laurel Highlands side. And back into the match is Andrew Mayakovich, another Mustang sophomore. As Tyler Davis retreats here for Ringgold. I'll poke it back to Aiden Whaley. Set up another goal kick. That's 21-56 left here in the second half. I'll go off of Mayakovich and outs. Rams get possession back. A little header there from Ruvacaba out of play. Noah Barno. Take this throw in. And traffic rule of a a slide tackle attempt there from Barno. Sent rule of a down. Foul should be on Barno. That was pretty obvious as well. Rule of a will get the free kick. Nice little blast there. Johns was trying to head it around the top of the box, but it rolls all the way back to. Aiden Whaley. Correction, that was Mayakovich, not Johns there, top of the box. Played back here to Ben Diamond. Leave it back for Simpson with a little pressure coming on there from Ben Daskovic. Ball sent out of play. I haven't called Daskovic and Stanko's name too much. You got the start on the Ringgold front line here today. And a change here for the Rams midway through this second half. Give us an opportunity to remind you again that South Union Township soccer action brought to you by the Sprouse Insurance Group and insurance agent David Hughes, United Bank, Davis and Davis Attorneys at Law, Smith Lewis Chess, CPAs in Uniontown, Jason Scott, South Union Township Supervisor, Southwestern Gastrointestinal Specialist, SWGI in Uniontown, Zebley Mahal of White, Uniontown Business and Bankruptcy Attorneys, UPMC Centers for Rehab Services, Wayland Smith Drive, Jim Burns, director. 
South Union Township Supervisors Robert Schiffbauer, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott, and Chesler's Fine Furniture, Pittsburgh Road, Uniontown, in front of the Fayette Plaza, where customers send their friends. Here we go again, another free kick outside the box. Tyler Davis will take it. See if they push that three-man wall back a little bit. Well, we see that in soccer. They'll crowd up as much as possible. Those grass fields, we'll see the little shaving cream bottles. Davis will angle it back and head it out of the zone, trying to come forward to Oliveris again. A little collision there with Ringgold's Chance Capacato. Oliveris keeping the fight alive. Over to Nico Johns. Off a little deflection down on the far side. Mustangs keep possession here on the run. Again, deflected on the cross attempts from Courtney Weston down to Radcliffe in the box, trying to pull it back there to Oliveris. Play whistled out of bounds and over the far boundary and out. Rather, goal kick. 18 40. Left in regulation time. Taking a look at the schedule for both of these teams as far as what's ahead. Laurel Highlands will travel to Washington on Saturday for a 1 o'clock game against the Little Prexies. Again, that is a conference game. Then travel to Albert Gallatin on Tuesday. Next home match here against Uniontown next Thursday. That should be a lot of fun anytime Uniontown and Laurel Highlands get together. That's a week from tomorrow. 7.30 start for the Mustangs and the Red Raiders. Here from Mustang Field, and actually three straight games against Fayette County opponents for Laurel Highlands next week at Albert Gallatin Tuesday, home against Uniontown on Thursday, and then at Connellsville the following Saturday on the 25th. So a lot of local games for Laurel Highlands. That Connellsville game, though, a non-conference game. Falcons play up in 4A. And for Ringgold up next, they'll actually play tomorrow. They'll host Uniontown tomorrow night. Well, they get right back at it. No Saturday game for the Rams this week. And look out here. Another collision. Are we going to get a foul? Shot taken. The play was whistled down. Advantage not played, but it will be a free kick just outside the box for the Ring Gold Rams. Mustangs getting a little sloppy defensively here in the second half. And this one from 19 yards out, almost the exact spot Radcliffe scored upon for the Mustangs just on the far side earlier on in the match. It'll be Tyler Davis to take it. Fakes the first run up. Now Davis set to go with the blast, and that one too far, high and wide. Missed the far corner of the goal there by a pretty wide margin. The only shot on goal the Rams have is the goal they scored. And coming from Zach Whaley. Laurel Highlands nine shots on goal. Again, they've scored four. Teams will meet again at Joe Montana Stadium in October. That's a solid early season win for Laurel Highlands. So they can hang out. It'll be there. Second straight against the Rams. That should be another foul as Stasco initiated the contact on the Ringgold side. We have free kick here for Rubla Caba. With 16.39 left in regulation time. Rubla Caba on the angle near side. Joey Lomansky trying to come up the field, and he ran into... Stasco again. They mentioned haven't said Stasco's name too often, and now Stasco picks up a yellow. I'm not sure that was a combination yellow after two successive fouls. Didn't look like the second foul itself warranted a yellow, but maybe the two combined did. Occurring here at the 1629 mark of the Second half, so Stasco will have to sit for five minutes. He won't be eligible to come back until the 11:29 mark of the second half. A free kick again here for Ruva Kaba. 
Nice blast. Good distance on that one. And a knockdown there from Whaley. And the Rams clear it out here on the near side. Nico Johns takes the quick throw in. Try to get it back there from Lemansky, and his lob will go behind the goal. Our goal kick coming back for Whaley and the Rams. Reminder, if you're watching this replay on Atlantic Broadband or Armstrong Cable, please subscribe to our Facebook page, South Union TV. All of our broadcasts streamed live. You can even sign up for notifications anytime we go live here on the South Union Township Sports Network. And we're back tomorrow. More live action. Laurel Highlands girls in action against Trinity. 7.30 starts. I'll be behind the mic again. Jerry Dupay behind the camera here on the South Union Township Sports Network. Another collision here at midfield. And they're going to go with the foul on Laurel Highlands this time. And Ringgold to get a free kick, working left to right. This one rolls back to Ruba Kaba, trying to lob it in front of Zacharias Henderson. And played forward and cleared out there by Mayakovic. As Weston tries to run it down, blasted back by Whaley. It's interesting on the Ringgold side, it's been... Close to two years since the Rams have played a non-conference game because of the COVID pandemic. And there's a collision between Henderson and Ruva Kaba. And a free kick coming back here for the Mustangs. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic and high COVID cases last fall around Ringgold, the Rams only played conference games. Played 12 matches, won three and nine. And so far this year, they have not played a non-conference game either. Early only playing the minimum required matches. They do have, though, coming up on September the 25th, a non-conference match at Yox. So assuming that match is played, that'll end their long streak without a non-conference game. Another bump ahead there from Fosnot. Does it materialize as Rova Kaba again tries to clear it out around Henderson? Be a throw in here for Maya Kovic, who will leave it back for Rula Kaba. Back into Joey Lemansky. You give these teams credit, you look at the professional circuit. Teams are lucky to play two matches in a week. And here's Nico Johns, comes free top of the 18. Nice little work off to his left. Blast save out in front, no rebound. Mustangs unable to get the rebound there. Whaley. Gave it up on the far side of it. was cleared out by the Rams. As the Mustangs can get the deflection out in front. Another collision. Looked like a Ram just fell down in front of Rulva Kaba. Hard to really blame him for that. And that was Ryan Cole. Nonetheless, Ring Goal will get a free kick. But back to my initial thought. If you look at the MLS or even the Premier League. Rarely do you see the teams play two matches in a week. And if you do, it's usually... Wholesale changes for the second match. And in the high school level, we mentioned Ringgold playing again tomorrow. Playing on back-to-back -back days, they'll play Uniontown. And a lot of times you'll see these teams play three, four matches in a week. And the same kids starting night in and night out. Really credit the fitness level out there here in the high school game. We'll touch back here to Joey Lemansky. Lemansky from 30 yards out on goal. Whaley makes the save. Ten shots on goal now in the match on the Laurel Highlands side. And we have an injury timeout with 12-14 left in regulation. Likely a cramping situation at this juncture of the match. I believe that's Radcliffe. I think Jerry can get a camera shot on that. Yes, Harry Radcliffe just cramping up a little bit. And he's been even busier than most of the Mustangs soccer team. He's been... Kicking field goals and extra points for Laurel Highlands on Friday nights for the football team, along with Matt Lucas. Not sure what the timetable is for Lucas to return. He got injured in Laurel Highlands' soccer match on Saturday against Bell Vernon. 
2-0 loss against the Leopards. Only loss for the Mustangs so far this year. That was also the match where Thatcher Wilson picked up the red card in goal for Laurel Highlands. And Lucas has a pretty good leg as well. He got some time kicking extra points in the Mustangs' blowout win over Brownsville last Friday night. And his distance on the kicks, quite impressive. We have to see Matt Lucas back both on the football field and playing soccer again very soon for Laurel Highlands. Again, not sure on the timetable for his return right now. A little touch back and forth there. Mustangs trying to set it up here to Mayakovic on the near side. Back to Lemansky. Touch forward there to Weston. And now Joey again. And a sidestep Fosnot. Looking for Weston. Alvarez takes it away there for Ringel. Collision between Diamond and Davis. Davis winning it for the moment. Trying to heal it back, keep it in play. Back to Alvarez again. Pushed up the field to Weaver. Goes cross field on the near side. On the lob there looking for Ryan Cole. Mustangs up four. 11-20 left in regulation. Scooped up again. By Aiden Whaley. Rams keeper. Over the head of Daskovic. Nico Johns a poke forward, no one home. Rams a little angle here on the near side. Over to Henderson. And a little contact there with Keaton Rulva Kaba. Mayakovic backing up for the Mustangs. And the Rams taking a free kick there with Shane Seiler. Working it up to Henderson with three Mustangs around. Nice little push forward, little activity here inside the box. On the chase down on the near side, looking for the cross. There was Fosnot deflected high in the air and out of play. Should be a corner kick here for Ringgold. Coming with 10-20 left on a running clock here in the second half, and the Rams down three. Fosnot to take it. Talking things over with Zach Alvarez. Fawz not repositioning his troops. Takes the kick, a little low one, and that got deflected in. I might have been an own goal right off of Simpson. I don't think anybody else touched it going in. Jerry's telling me that he thought Davis touched it. I thought it went straight off of Fosnot. I think it's an own goal off of Simpson and in to make it 4-2. Nonetheless, the Rams back to within two. Tightening things up here a little bit. Final 10 minutes. Nico Johns, low ball coming forward. Mustangs, Mayakovic looking to answer back. Send it off the football crossbar. Yeah, we'll have to go back and look at the replay before I can definitively say who it touched. He had a lot of activity inside, but the way that Simpson reacted made me think it came right off the corner and off of Simpson and in. That was my interpretation of it. We'll have to double check before we can make an official announcement. Here are the Rams coming back here. Fosnot again. It's a two-goal game right now. That one scooped up by Simpson with Davis on the doorstep. Ringo... Ringold goal by number 19, Aiden Fosnot. Here's a little run coming back here. Thatcher Wilson on the cross, and that one going off of Mayakovic announced. They announced the goal 
to Fosnot. And again, we'll have to double check on the replay and verify if it was touched out in front and if so, by whom. Nonetheless, it cuts the Laurel Highlands lead to two at four to two. The Rams a little spring back in their step. Still need two more in the final eight minutes. Both teams still playing hard. Sent in by Zach Whaley, who scored the first. Rod Radcliffe, excuse me, going cross field near side. Mustangs keep it in play. Nice run there from Joey Lemansky. Lemansky working back off to his right. Shake and bake now, going to the left there of Ryan Cole. Staying with it. Great possession there from Lemansky. Touch from Johns, far side, Radcliffe, blast from 25 into the back of the net. Hat trick, Harry Radcliffe. From 25 yards out. And Laurel Highlands extends their lead right back to 5-2. to two Here at the 7.30 mark of the second half. So Radcliffe gets his third of the night, fifth of the season. And the Mustangs go on top 5-2. to two. And it was great possession, initially set up by Joey Lemansky. It was touched back to Nico Johns, who will get the assist on the play. And Harry Radcliffe gets the goal for Johns. That's his second assist of the night. Now has four assists for the season. And the Mustangs have their three-goal cushion back. So it reads Radcliffe from Johns at the 7.30 mark of the second half to extend the Laurel Highlands lead back to 5-2. to two. And what a game for Harry Radcliffe. Didn't see anyone throw any hats, though, on the field. But well-deserving hat trick for Harry Radcliffe. Mustangs goal assisted by Nico Johns and scored by Harry Radcliffe, his third of the evening. Mustang down there. That's Thatcher Wilson. Hobbling coming to the bench. And it's the last thing the Mustangs need right now is another injury. You're going to have Weston go back in here on the Laurel Highlands side. Hopefully just a cramping situation there for Wilson. It pretty much played the opening 73 minutes straight. Didn't get too much of a rest. And a little chippiness still going on there between Ruba Kaba and Tyler Davis. And then Ruba Kaba getting warned. Here's Lemansky. Had a couple of cards in this one. One going to... Manny Oliveris at the 37-13 mark of the second half. Matt Snyder, the Ringgold head coach, got yellowed at the 27-58 mark. And then Stasco on the Ringgold side also picked up a yellow at the 16-29 mark. And a few other ones on each side that could have been yellows as well. well the referees decided to keep the cards in the pocket. Seven total goals in this match. Mustangs up three. Looking to go to four and one overall and three and one in conference play. Loss would drop Ringo to one and three, both overall and in the conference. Jerry Rogers already in his eighth year as the Mustangs head coach. Took over for Zach Seip. Jerry Sr. was an assistant to Coach Seip for a number of years. Matt Snyder now in his second year as Ringgold's head coach. Mustangs also with Jerry Rogers Jr. on the sidelines. Both Rogers, great people to work with. And done a nice job maintaining a high level of success for this Laurel Highland soccer program. Rolled back to Simpson, who blasts it out. Lomansky here on the near side, 425 left in regulation. 
Joey on the blast went off of the, the face of Ringgold's Shane Seiler. That had a sting. Seiler, pretty big guy out there, though, on the Rams side. Didn't seem to phase him too much. He took it better than I would have. Tim Lasick will send it in over to Nico Johns. Back to Tim again. And now Nico, nice give and go. Can Nico finish? He does off the near post and ends a little kiss into the back of the net for Nico Johns. And Johns has had a heck of a night as well. Two goals and two assists. Goal coming here at the 404 mark of the second half to increase the Laurel Highlands lead to 6-2. To so you Radcliffe with a hat trick. John's a four-point game. Two goals and two assists for the season now. Nico, three goals and four assists. And I believe Lemansky got the assist. And for Joey, I believe that's at least his second assist of the game. And that would give him three assists for the season. That Mustang goal scored by Nico Johns, his second of this evening, assisted by Joey Lemansky. Now we're getting wholesale substitutions on the Ringgold side. Actually had the backup. I think he had a backup keeper coming out there, but they just exchanged the reserve jerseys. You had Nico Bove coming in there for Aiden Weaver. So with 4.04 to play, lots of changes all around. In the final four minutes of regulation time, Zacharias Henderson trying to lead that run back and a foul called here on the Mustangs. Caleb Janoski. Radcliffe and Johns, certainly two of the stars in this match. Zach Whaley, a good goal off the bench on the Ringgold side. And the second Ringgold goal, as far as I'm concerned, still under review. And we'll double check and see if it was touched after the match out in front before going in. But to me, the way Simpson reacted could have very easily been an own goal off of Simpson into the back of the net that came straight from the corner, which I believe was taken by Fosnott. We'll double check and make sure the scoring is official when all is said and done. Final three minutes, 12 shots, six goals for the Mustangs, three shots on goal, two goals on the Rams side. Credit the Mustangs' defense, keeping Ringgold in check as well, not allowing those shots to get back towards Luke Simpson. Poke forward, open space, a blast there going just wide from Tim Lasick. And thanks for all the folks tuning in for the live stream here today. Caroline, Julie, Bobby, James, Jim, and everybody else who's chimed in throughout the course of the match. Two twelve now to play. A little collision on the far side. Henderson keeping it alive. Nico John still back there defensively. It's Janoski that sends it out over to Tim Lasick. Nice through ball coming forward here. And on the run, that's Courtney Weston with a blast into the back of the nets. So Courtney Weston, the sophomore, getting his first of the season. Increasing the Laurel Highlands lead now to five. It's seven to two. So what a blast there from Weston. Great transition play. Again from the Mustangs. I think it was Tim Lasick on the assist on the Weston goal. Nice to see some of these new names very involved on the Laurel Highlands side. Tonight, Wilson's played a nice game. Weston has given the Mustangs good minutes and now a goal off the bench. 
Final 90 seconds. Another run down here for Mayakovich. Was he tripped up inside the box? Nathan Burge made a little contact on him, but nothing called. And here's Henderson back through the midfield. Henderson going low and another collision. Henderson ran into, was that Radcliffe? Mustang goal by Courtney. No, it was 26. Ryan Rockwell that ran into Henderson. And the foul is going to go on Henderson. He's still slow in getting up. Clock stopped, injury timeout, 59 seconds left. Give us an opportunity to tell you one more time that tonight's game broadcast brought to you by the Sprouse Insurance Group and insurance agent David Hughes, United Bank, Davis and Davis Attorneys at Law, Smith Lewis Chess CPAs in Uniontown, Jason Scott, South Union Township Supervisor, Southwestern Gastrointestinal Specialist, SWGI in Uniontown, Zebley Mahal of Inouye, Uniontown Business and Bankruptcy Attorneys, UPMC Centers for Rehab Services on Wayland Smith Drive, Jim Burns Director, South Union Township Supervisors, Robert Schiff Bauer, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott, and Chessler's Fine Furniture, Pittsburgh Road, Union Town, in front of the Fayette Plaza, where customers send their friends. A 7 2 lead now for Laurel Highlands over Ringgold. We hope Zacharias Henderson is all right. After that collision, and he's being helped off. Mustangs led 3 1 at halftime. And they've outscored Ringgold 4 1 here in the second half. Again, Harry Radcliffe, three goals on the Laurel Highlands side. Oliveris chipped one in. Nico Johns, two goals and two assists. Latest goal scored by Courtney Weston. Zach Whaley, a goal for Ringgold, and one still under review. So 59 seconds left. You have Yanoski there along with Ian Hamilton. We're going to resume this match. I hope Henderson's all right over there. Janoski sends it down. Final minute. One minute remaining here in the second half. And for some reason, Jerry, I think we figured it out. I think the shots on goal for the visitor side is tied into what you're seeing on the scoreboard as far as what quarter it's in. It's showing third up on the scoreboard right now. And, again, we've had some issues with that. Appreciate you staying with us. But it's the second half, 25 seconds left. So we'll have to try to get that rectified. I don't know why the shots on goal on the visitor side is showing up as far as what half we're supposedly in. And a little contact there, going shoulder to shoulder. Burge along with Ryan Rockwell. Count it down, three, two, and one, and that will do it here for Mustang Field tonight. Your final score, Laurel Highland 7 and Ringgold 2. Tonight's game brought to you as a joint cooperative venture featuring Township Supervisors Bob Schiffbauer, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott, Atlantic Broadband, Armstrong Cable, and our friends at CUTV, including Gary Smith and his staff. Again, Brian Morozak with Jerry Dupay. Your final score, Laurel Highland 7 and Ringgold 2. This has been a South Union Township Sports Network presentation. Final score, Laurel Highland 7, Ringgold 2. We'd like to thank you all for coming and invite you back tomorrow night when Laurel Highland